All right, welcome back to New Zealand. It is 5 a.m. and I'm riding to Auckland. You know what that means. You want to talk about? What? You want to talk about? Nah, I'm not going to Taco Bell. But there's actually a Taco Bell in Wellington now. There are a lot of Taco Bells in New Zealand now. It's crazy how much things have changed in the past three years since my last Taco Bell run. So part of my reason for riding up to Auckland is to redo the ride that I did three years ago on my Energica Ego. That one had a 13.4 kilowatt hour battery and I had to stop nine times to charge just because it didn't have the kind of range that this one has. So this one, 21.5 kilowatt hour pack. I feel like I can make it in three stops, which is kind of a huge deal. I guess the positive about having such a big battery is that I don't have to stop every hour, I can stop maybe every two hours. And so a lot of the charging stations I stopped at last time, I can just skip and just kind of pick and choose which ones I want to go to. And so I have a few in mind. My first is going to be Bulls, about two hours away. And then after that, we'll see. So yeah, like I said, instead of nine stops, I thought I could do it in three. The plan was to stop here at these three charging stations. It didn't work out that way, but you'll have to keep watching to find out why. My goal with this trip was to find out if the newer bikes could do this trip faster, because there are two theories about this. You could either ride shorter distances with shorter charging times, but have to stop more times, like I did three years ago with the smaller battery, or ride for longer distances between stations, stopping to charge for a longer amount of time, but not stopping as many times. In my head, every charging stop means you're slowing down, riding off course, getting off the bike, plugging in, and all that time adds up. So stopping fewer times should be faster. At least this is what I wanted to find out. That was the experiment. I'm gonna be honest, I like stopping more often. Just to give my brain a rest. And my butt, I guess. Yeah, kind of feeling like shorter shorter rides and shorter charging stops instead of longer rides and longer charging stops i just get destroyed and then i don't know it's just not not long enough to recover maybe i don't know all right for anybody who's been watching my channel for a lot of years i just made it to mungaweka and this is this is that place that i rode the zero to uh the, there's like a restaurant under a plane well the restaurant is not there anymore and neither is the plane but on the zero, it took me six hours to get here. And I just made it here in three and a half. That's how far we've come. Pretty sweet. Oh boy. Well, this is gonna slow down my run. But hopefully the weather's better tomorrow and this isn't as muddy. Actually the same thing happened on my other trip, on the Ego. And my bike was covered in mud. So was my backpack. It was even worse this time, and I was freezing cold. This hot chocolate saved me. Holy crap, I'm so cold, soaking wet. This is terrible, most, most miserable ride ever. Yep. Oh, my bike is disgusting. Wow, that's gross. Ugh. Needs a wash immediately. I didn't even plan on stopping here. I was thinking I'd make it all the way across the desert road, but there's just no way. I just couldn't handle it. I feel like the bike had enough power, but I did not. I had to stop. I got a hot chocolate and uh, I'm just letting it charge up fully. And I'm going to charge in Turangi just to see what the charging situation is like there. Um, I think it's a Z station, which I've never used before. I had to sign up for their app. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm gonna hit the road. I'm not sure how much video I'll shoot across the desert road because it looks like crap. And um, yeah, I'll just update you on the other side. All right, peace. This is another place I stopped with the Ego three years ago, but it was a charge net station back when all stations were charge net. Oh, it's so cold. Turn plug, sweet. Man, too easy. I really like these stations. All right, now I have 150 k's to go to Tirao, however you pronounce it. 92%, 223 k's of range estimated. Third charging stop and I'm still in the green and the battery. So uh, either things are good, um, and the battery is not overheating, or uh, 
it's just really cold. I don't know. <laughs> it's probably just really cold. All right, let's go. Oh, Tapo, you so cool. Ah, uh, so worth it. The rain, the cold, the winds. For this, it was totally worth it. Okay, just got to the Enchanted Cafe. That leaf was following me for a while. They came out and were like, hey, I thought that was electric. We were following you and didn't see an exhaust pipe. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My dirty bike. Turangi to Tirao. Absolutely no problem. So Tirao to Auckland is the next leg. I found out there's another charging station in Tirao. Um, it's the BP station. And so I'm going to go there. I had to download another app for the BP. There's Zed, there's ChargeNet, there's OpenLoop, and now there's BP. Oops, oh my god. Scary, scary, scary. Oh, scary rocks. So uh, it says one is available, so I'm going to go check it out. Beepy, beepy, beepy. Okay, hey, charging station. How cool is it that I was at a charging station like two minutes away and I just, it was busy over there, so I came here and there's another one at a gas station. And it seems like all the gas stations in New Zealand are picking this up and installing charging stations as well. It's just cool. It's cool to have more options and options that are so close that like if one's busy you can just pop over and have another one. Things have changed. It's, it's pretty cool. It's exciting. It's exciting to see. So I'm excited to go on more road trips like this and just like see the progress as it happens. I mean it would have been cooler to have lunch at the Enchanted Cafe instead of like a gas station parking lot but it's alright. I got some like chicken schnitzel Peri peri something spicy. It's nice. Um. All right, so that was awesome. Um, hey, cat. Hey. Hey. Okay, don't want to be friends. See ya. <laughs> yeah, so I think tomorrow when I come back down, I'll swing by this place first just to see if it's available because that was really easy and really fast. And if it's not, then I'll cruise by the Enchanted Cafe and try the. Good old charge net. Look at me excited for more apps in my phone. Hey, corrugated dog. And corrugated Jesus. <laughs> it's just, what the hell? Okay. So part of the reason for this ride was to see if my new bike was better at long distance trips than the old ones. But the real reason why I was in such a rush to get up to Auckland was that there was a drag racing event in Mary Mary called the Night Wars. So I decided to combine both trips. Mary Mary is one exit away from Hampton Downs, New Zealand's big international racetrack that also has a charging station, so I stopped there and charged up as high as I could go to make sure I had full power at the drag strip. I'm throwing around a lot of names of places that most people around the world have probably never heard of, so I hope that these maps help. This is where I started in the morning, and this is where I am now. Pretty crazy that an electric motorcycle can go this far, right? <laughs> Awesome. Drift Park, ah, oh, This is one exit down from Hampton Downs where Mad Mike was. Mad Mike drove by in his big crazy van and gave me a thumbs up. That was awesome. to beat <laughs> the competition for the night. You know, nothing weird about this. It's not missing an engine. I've done quarter mile runs before so I know how fast Energicas are, but never on a prep drag strip racing side by side against gas bikes, complete with the Christmas tree lights. So for this one I let my buddy Steven ride it because he has more experience and he's ridden my bike before and also so I could shoot some sweet video from the stands. Zero nine nine and mate one, one three zero and mate two, no name. No name, but you want to be anonymous when you're that fast. The right hand lane of the Hyabusa versus the truck rocket and the left. The truck rocket has checked out. There's a good hard pulsating rocket. Excuse the 11 flat. Baby steps. 
Yep. It's all about me, Mr. Yep. Nice. Don't go out there and try to be Valentino Rossi on the first day. Right, right. I might go down for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That guy. No misses. I know. <laughs> There's Gil versus Busa. Eleven point one. Got a few things here. <laughs> All right, we've got Stephen and Bill lining up now. Good couple of white boy names. He's rocking the jeans tonight. <laughs> That's an alternative strategy in terms of safety. And this is a good one. And I think he's got them all day long. Length and length in the left hand lane. And he crosses the light at a 10.98 visible at 7.8. Nice, a whole second nice. and a quarter mile. That is quite a lot. You did it! You did it! He said too fast. Too fast? Well, need the special license. What? Need a special license to go 10. Huh? Yeah. Seriously? He said don't do don't go don't go that fast anymore. He said don't <laughs> bring an electric motorcycle. It's too fast. Over the course of the night we gradually turned the traction control down until it was totally off. And when you do that, the bike gets rowdy. Number one is inner inner seeker Eva RS up against Daniel Chapman from Cambridge. So that means we've got to speak very slowly as he's from Cambridge for so uh. TSX what 1300 R. Uh. And the way he goes, Chapman there, he's trying to make it every post the winning post. That was exciting. That was a bit too much. That sucks. You get to go again. We, we know his limits. Yeah. <laughs> Steven said he hasn't ridden a bike that scared him in a long time, and now he wants to buy one. So yeah, Steven's fastest run was a 10.9, which we found out wasn't allowed because he needed a special racing license to do anything below 11. Obviously he went out again because I came all this way, and how cool would it be to get kicked out for going too fast? But even doing a sweet electric burnout, there just wasn't enough traction on the drag strip to do another 10. Not enough traction and not enough focus. It was so cool to see how strong the car and motorcycle culture is up here. You know, there wasn't any drama, everybody was just super friendly and supportive, and all the races were just for fun. It made me realize how much I missed these kind of events. The next day on the way back down, my Senna died and so did my GoPro, which is the least professional I've ever been making a YouTube video. But here's another map to show where I charged. I was able to cut it down to four stops, so I didn't hit my goal, but needing to stop less than half as many times as I did on the old bike was pretty impressive. And the distances weren't even that far, so if I could cut this one out, I feel like three stops is still possible. Alright, well, that was awesome. Um, it was a really long ride, but it was fun. It's totally worth it. It was rough, but it was worth it. Because drag racing, it's always fun. Just being around all those cool bikes and cars, and like, a, a lot of people did nine second quarter miles, which is just insane. Anyway, it was awesome, and I'm glad that drag strips and these kind of racing events still allow electric vehicles. Unlike tracks that don't, I told you guys I was going to do a follow-up on why the tracks ban electrics, and so uh, here's the full story. So a couple years ago when I took the Ego to Manfield for the first time, Manfield's our local track, it's the closest one to us, it's like two, two and a half hours away. The organizer came up to me and said, you know, Pukekohe banned electrics. Um, and it's just, it kind of blew my mind, like why would they do that? Um, they said battery fires, that's, that's the, the fear I guess is the potential of a car crash or a motorcycle crash in my, in my case. Um, and they don't know how to put out the batteries because they don't have the, the safety equipment, they don't know anything about it really because it's new technology. And so Pukekohe abandoned first and then Pukekohe closed so that's not really an issue for me. But uh, Taupo, a track that I've always wanted to go to and I will go to eventually, I want to go there in the summer, um, 
they banned electrics. And I'm like, man, it's such a bummer. But at least I can still go to Manfield. And so we went to Manfield a few more times because I can actually ride the bike there on a single charge, which is cool. Now the organizer came by and told me, no, electrics are banned, sorry. And it's not even Motorsport New Zealand that banned them. They allow them. They're like, it's a production vehicle. You know, Teslas, Energicas, Zeros, whatever. Um, they're made by the factory, they're safe, so you can run them, no problem. If you build your own, it's a different story, but apparently the tracks just make their own rules. So it's not a motorsport New Zealand thing, it's the tracks themselves that uh, they just decide whether or not you can run. And so I reached out to the track just to get a confirmation, like something in writing, just to make sure that the organizer heard this correctly, and they confirmed it's a safety thing. So if you have a Tesla and you drive into a wall for some reason and it catches on fire, they don't know how to put the fire out. They don't have a lithium blanket, they don't have a water tank, they don't have um, water trucks, they don't have like, uh, I don't know, a bunch of sand to dump on it. There's different ways of doing it and they don't have any way of doing it. I mean, even if you did all those things to put the fire out, that's the end of the track day for everybody. Like, you can't just run up with a fire extinguisher, put it out, and then tow it off the track. It's not really the case with lithium fires. So until they figure that out, um, they're, they're banning electrics. And the problem is, they said writing new regulations will take a minimum of 18 months. So a year and a half before we can ride our electric bikes or take Teslas to the track. Uh, and that's all tracks from what I've been told. So all tracks in New Zealand are banning electrics for a minimum of 18 months. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm probably just gonna keep renting gas bikes to the track, unfortunately, and keep this for these kind of road trips, I guess. But I don't know, this, this trip has been rough, so I'm not sure how many of these I'm gonna do. But anyway. Oh hey, what's that? <laughs> nah. Oh yeah, you're probably curious. Is it faster than the old bike? Uh, yeah, it is, by half an hour. So, I beat my old record. Uh, on the Ego, I did 11 and a half hours, and on this one, 11 hours. Not bad. Um, I feel like I could have gone faster if I took a, a better route and didn't stop at a charger that wasn't working and stuff. Although, I was able to go on the other side of Lake Taupo, and that way wasn't even possible with the old bike because the battery was too small like that. You needed more range to get around that side and that side was really cool. Just like amazing roads, amazing scenery and like you could see the volcanoes from way far away. It was awesome. So um, yeah, no regrets. I, could, I definitely wouldn't go back to the old bike. So I guess in a couple of years if there's a new electric bike that has way more range or faster charging or something, I'll have to try it again. See if I can beat my record. But right now I really don't want to do this ever again. That was torture. And I don't know how you guys do long distance rides and like iron butts and stuff. That just doesn't sound fun at all. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.